It's Sunday, April 20th, and this is the Mobile Tech Addict Show. Hi, I'm your host Gareth and I'm here to tell you what's happening in the tech world this week in the UK. Over on the site we've unboxed this little beastie here, the uh, Sony Xperia Z1 Compact. Seems to be a nice little device, it's uh, not skimping on the specifications, it's, it's sitting right up there. With a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 quad-core 2.2 crate processor inside, it's got 16 gigabytes of memory with 2 gigabytes of RAM, all on a slightly smaller form factor than the Z1 and the Z2 that was released just a month afterwards. It comes in a variety of different flavors. There's 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte. It also comes in various colors as well. It's got glass in the back and glass in the front that makes it quite a bit more robust. Um, however, it has a dedicated camera button, which is always a nice feature that we're happy to see. And it'll function more like a camera with a zoom on the top or on the side even. We'll have the review up in the coming weeks when we get our head around it just exactly how good this device is. Also over on the site, we unboxed a phone. Now this is no ordinary mobile phone. This is in fact a home phone running Android. It's a Gigaset SL930A. It's not the prettiest looking device in the world, however, for a home phone, you're not really going to be seen around town with it, so it doesn't have to be that pretty, I guess. It's very plastic, however, it has that metal fascia around the outside of it that gives it more of a quality feel. And it's a heavy, heavy blader as well. Uh, inside it, it's got um, a one gigabyte of RAM and a gigabyte of storage, which will take all your contacts, but it also has a micro SD card slot in it just in case you want to expand those or the kids insist on having games however playing them on the 3.2 inch tft 320 by 480 capacitive display here isn't going to be the most wonderful experience they've ever had but it's a home phone and therefore it's a little different we recently discussed this on the podcast and we suddenly realized that having Android running on a home phone isn't such a great idea because you have to sign into it with your Gmail account. So for a family phone, that means everyone has access to, to your email and you might not exactly want that. Also, if your house was to get broken into, someone would have complete and utter access to everything you own in Gmail and Google. Unless, of course, this comes with some form of lock on it, in which case that will be quite annoying whenever the home phone rings and you have to unlock your phone with a four digit pin, for example. However, we will be looking into it as it's a, a decked phone. Um, I do want to have a go with this and, and just see exactly what happens with it. So we'll have a play and we'll have a review up in the coming weeks or months or years. The Project ARIA developer challenge is kicked off over in the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. Now this is a phone with uh, interchangeable parts on it. You buy a shell, a skeletal shell, and you add the bits that you want and need. It can reduce the price or it can add the features that you desperately want and you can lose the features that you don't really need or have never used. It's a very nice idea. Uh, we can see an awful lot of positive things about this phone. Uh, we, we're not entirely satisfied with everything on the market, uh, given compatibility or where you get them from. Uh, will you be able to plug in various different things on every phone that you buy, or will there be exclusive ones to certain types of phone that you happen to pick up? Will two things not be compatible? There's $100,000 put up for grabs for the person who comes up with the most inventive module to add to this phone, and they're going to be judging that on the basis of the novelty, functionality, elegance, quality, impact, and the commercial potential of those modules. Google are going to make uh, roughly 100 to 200 of these prototypes available to the developers and the challenge ends in mid-September, which is quite a short amount of time for the developers, but they say that that uh, really gets the creative juices flowing if, they, if they're acting under pressure. Nice of them. So one of the biggest stories this week is the Amazon phone. They're talking about releasing an Amazon phone as soon as this summer. Some of the rumors say that it has several cameras on the face of it. 
3D is going to be a big feature built in there. Many websites are analyzing the potential of having such a huge amount of 3D inside a phone. One of the ideas thrown up was uh, that you can do 3D shopping. The 3D interface could obviously enhance gaming as well. Uh, the Amazon TV pl can plug into a 3D TV, so they could be bringing out a new slew of 3D games. Perhaps they want to lead the way on 3D gaming. Amazon Dash is a form of barcode scanner that allows you to possibly simplify buying your groceries. You can put together a shopping basket full of groceries by just opening your fridge, which would be very, very handy. And lastly, one of the big things is uh, Amazon Prime ob obviously offers the video on demand service. If they were to add adverts to this, they could potentially open up the free video streaming market to the, the customers who don't want to have to pay that $100 a month or $99 a month, 79 pounds a month, I believe it might be here in the UK. One of the biggest blunders happened this week when US Airways tweeted a rather obscene picture to a young girl. The young girl named Ellie after had uh, lamb blasted US Airways for ruining her holiday and they sent back a rather apologetic tweet combined with a rather unapologetic picture of a young lady inserting a plane where you aren't supposed to insert a plane. US Airways obviously apologised for the obscene picture. There hasn't been any information quite recently as to what has happened with that, but whether it's a disgruntled employee or just an accidental pasting of the wrong link. And lastly this week, there's an app out that provides a viable alternative to Instagram. It's called Front Back. It allows you to take a picture with the back camera and then the front camera too. A number of devices over the years have attempted to accomplish this. I seem to remember the Samsung Galaxy S3 or 4 or something having a, a feature built into it where you could take a picture and then it would superimpose a little selfie of yourself taking the picture into the picture that you had just taken. So essentially you can be in the picture too. This goes a little bit more extreme by cutting the picture in half and having the top half being the back camera and the bottom half being the front camera. Going through the application, you can see where people are using this to the, their creative best. And it's a, it's a very nice little application that uh, I have dabbled with myself. Yeah. So if you want to catch up with all the other news, uh, we did a podcast just the other day and there's a link to that down here. You can uh, jump on that and watch myself, Phil and Dan talking about all the latest events at length. Or you can jump over to tracyandmatt.co.uk and have a read at all our little articles and unboxings and reviews. And we'll be back next week with another show and of course another podcast. Take care now.